What's up? This is not 1-bit, 2-bit, 3-bit, 4. This is 8-bit Eric and your mom is a whore. Today we are going to go ahead and talk about NES Zapper games. Pew pew! Gotcha the game brings to you Capture the Flag action on the NES. If you haven't played Capture the Flag before, the whole goal is to capture the other team's flag, then move back to the other side of the screen before time runs out. What makes Gotcha very interesting is that instead of automatically scrolling the levels, you must manually do it yourself along with the D-pad. All at the same time of shooting the guys that pop out of random places along the way. It's a very simple design that makes a large difference as far as a shooting game goes. This game gives you complete control to go back and forth across the level as you see fit. Like how I go back and forth on your mom. <laughs> Now, it can be tempting to want to shoot every single person that runs on screen, but honestly, it's just better to shoot the guys who aim their weapons at you and carry on. Unfortunately, there's only three levels in this game. A forest level, a city level, and a snow level. Gotcha is a very fun game to play, and it had a lot of potential that was just lost because it just seems that it wasn't polished enough. The enemy selection in this game is pretty plain. You shoot guys in camouflage, you shoot punks, you see what I did there? The enemy animation of the sprites is pretty funny though. When you shoot them, they just lift their hands up like they just got caught red-handed in a robbery. Really? Who gets shot and waves their hands up like this? For real. It's like... Duh! This had the potential to be the best Zapper game on the NES library. And just the simple fact that it's not long enough, there's no variety of enemies or stage levels, really hinders it in my opinion. But it is still worth a look. This is one of the better LJN games on the NES, believe it or not. Next up, we got Freedom Force. Freedom Force is like a poor man's version of Lethal Enforcers. Your mission is to take on a variety of terrorists that have taken over the airport and surrounding areas in a game that makes a good attempt at being one of the better Zapper games on the NES. However, don't let this game's simplicity fool you. It is incredibly hard. That's what she said. As in, you only have one life and no continues hard. And since the bad guys pop at different places every time you play the game, there is absolutely no way to memorize any patterns. But in a strange way, this also gives good incentive for replay value. The graphics in this game are pretty decent. The character animations are actually pretty good by NES standards, and it's just satisfying to see the enemies fly to their death after being shot. My main complaint is that it just feels like the screen moves way too slow. This just irritates me so much. I seriously could go take a shit and I would still be in the same part of the stage. Look at this. There is a two-player mode, however, it is turn-based. So if you want to play with somebody else, make sure they suck so you get a chance to play. Freedom Force does provide some intense NES action that will make you feel like a big screen movie action star. It is definitely worth a look. Well guys, that is two NES Zapper games down. We got two more to go, but before we continue, how about you comment below with some of your favorite NES Zapper games? If you don't, I swear to God, I am going to twerk naked. And well guys, back to our list, we got Operation Wolf. This is the NES port of the arcade classic of the same name. Operation Wolf's graphics are typical of what occurs when programmers try to convert arcade graphics to the NES. Every level is a flat looking background that continually scrolls in one direction. Enemy soldiers run out from both sides of the screen shooting at you. There is somewhat a sense of depth in this game because some soldiers are way in the back of the playing field and then some of them are really close. However, the animation isn't all that great so it kind of gets lost in translation. It is kind of amazing how many things could be on the screen at once with no slowdown or flicker at all. I mean, look at the variety of things on the screen. You got soldiers. Pigs, cocks. I shot my cock. The play control of this game is not really all that great, especially if you use a zapper. I mean, I was looking forward to using the zapper. And it just doesn't have turbo fire, which is necessary to do anything in this game. The only option that you're left with is the controller. Now, there is several different speed settings for the controller, and you're given a crosshair to move around. 
What the f That guy kind of looks familiar. Oh my god, it is me! I love how the prisoner of war is just running through crossfire like a hurt dirt. Hurt dirt dirt, help me! Help me! Help me! Help me! Overall, Operation Wolf is an okay zapper game. Could be a lot worse. It's worth a look. It's cheap if you want to go ahead and collect it. There is several better NES titles out there though that use the zapper. Baby Puma, baby Puma, baby Puma, baby Puma, baby Puma. Baby Boomer, baby, baby, baby Boomer. Oh, 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 come and rock me, baby Boomer. Baby Boomer is about a young baby named Boomer who has to crawl slowly through nine torturous levels to get back to his mom. When I say torturous, I mean torturous, like nipple clamps and ball gags. This is a rather weird zapper game, and if you think about it, it's the only NES game where you actually point a gun at a baby's direction. Now, Baby Boomer encounters various obstacles such as enemies, bottomless pits, and more. The enemies can be shot and destroyed, and bridges can be created by shooting clouds. You also have to keep on the lookout for bottles of milk to shoot, because if Boomer's milk meter goes down, oh man, god forbid the crying that will ensue. The levels in this game are way over the top. You go from a sunny park to a creepy cave, heaven, and even hell. It's a serious pain in the ass to keep up with everything on the screen, and trust me, you'll be tempted to play with a real gun as opposed to the NES Zapper. You'll be hating this game so much that you'll wish Baby Boomer's mom got an abortion. <laughs> hey, come on! Wasn't that bad of a joke? This game is kind of uncommon and pretty pricey. I don't think it's worth the price, however, if you manage to snag a copy, I guess it's a nice little obscure title to have to your collection, however, you're not missing much. And well guys, that is it for NES Zapper Games, next week we are going to take a look at some of my favorite rentals of all time.